Code Afric. Unlock the future. All right, friends, welcome back. We are still on our slider section. So now let me um, start with a comment. All right, so our slider will start from here. It is better if we end it also. Okay, so we are going to write the code for our slider. Okay, here we are going to work on this place and adding our images and code. Okay, now we have to locate the slider. We are in the slider class. Then the next thing to do is let's give it a width. And with the width, I would like to go with 100%. When you're using the 100%, it makes the, the width work responsive. Okay, now let's give it a height. And the height, I would, I would like to go like seven, 700 pixels. Okay. As at now, we will not see any changes. They still look like the same. Now, let's go ahead and work with uh, our image. Let's insert our image. And before that, when we come to desktop, I've added my image to my image folder. So make sure you do the same. Okay. So the image, I'll say background, background image. And with the image, I'm going to use the, the universal resource locator, okay, which is the URL. Okay. So I'll do URL. Now I have to come out from two folders, okay? I am in the CSS folder. I have to come out from the CSS folder, okay, so that I can enter into my images folder uh, before I can reference my image, which is the slider.jpg. Before anything, let's save it and see how it ends, all right? All right, so when we check it in the browser, we don't have much, okay? So now let's go and write some um, code. Let's give it a background size. Then we give it a cover. We come to the background position. Then we say center. Okay. Now let's check it. Save it and let's check it. Okay. So this is what we have. All right. So now if you compare this one to the original one, you can see that with the original one, um, it has some opacity. Okay. When I'm talking about opacity, you can see that um, it is kind of um, dark. Okay. The background is kind of dark. Okay. So we are going to work on that one. All right. Now we come here, we have to come to the, uh, the HTML section and we have to reference this class, okay? Um, slider overlay, okay? Now we head towards the, our CSS and here we have to call the slider and we say overlay. All right, so we call this class and the first thing that we have to do is give it a width, a width of 100% and a height also of 100%. Okay, now let's give it a background. Let's give it RGBA. Okay, so you know the RGB stands for the red, green, and blue. The A stands for the overlay or the opacity. Okay, so we're going to give it uh, the overlay. Okay, the overlay is where we can change the colors to, like it, um, we can reflect it as a dark mode like that. So we give all zero. We say the red should have zero, and the green should have zero, the blue should have zero, and the opacity, okay, or the, or the overlay. That one rather should have, um, let's say 70. All right, something like this. Now let's save it and check sorry so instead of 70 we say 0 0.70 okay uh, something like that 0 0.70 okay let's check it again and there we go okay when you compare it to this one it's too dark let's make it 60. okay i think this one uh, let, what about 65. all right let's leave it like this all right so the next thing to do let's give it a position and we say relative. So the position relative, we have a lot of features for positions. So we have a lot of features and values. It could be position absolute. There are more, but I rather would like to go for the, the relative. All right. So the next thing to do is that we will come to our index.html. Then we come to our slider content. We have to work on the, the thing that we put here, including the, the icons here. We have to work on that one. Okay. Let's position them at the center and work on them. All right, and you can see that um, this font also is in this class, okay, the slider content. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll come out and do slider, slider content, and I'll give it a position. I'll give it a position absolute and do top, let's give it 39, and let's give it a weight, 100%, a weight of 100%. Let's save it and check. Okay, we don't have much. So let's change the pixels to percentage, okay? So we said 39%. Now let's check it. Okay, you can see that it has positioned them at the center nicely, all right? Okay, so um, we need to work on this also, okay? And it's coming from the font icon and the icon. So when we come to the HTML, you can see that it's here. We reference this icon class, and also we reference the 
um, font or sub, which is the FA class. Okay, so it will be like we will do dot icon then dot FA. Okay, font or sub. Then let's give it a font size of thirty five pixels. Now let's check it before, and we can see that the font has been increased. Okay. Now I'll come to the slider section and I'll give it, I have to add a color, okay? So I'll do color, then I will go for the hash code FFFF, -F -F -F, which is white, okay? Now let's check it. Awesome, awesome. All right, so um, if we can check from here, okay, it is stick to each other. We need to give it a margin, okay? Uh, so we'll come to the, the icon dot uh, font awesome here. We give it a margin right, then we give it like seven pixels, and uh, let's check it okay all right so let's go ahead and work on this our button here okay contact us and learn today all right we can do that by locating the class all right so that class is coming from here okay you can see we have btn class btn one okay button one that is contact us and we have button two that is learn more okay so i'm going to reference this uh, button one okay let's go ahead and do that i'll come to my css then i'll start with a pattern okay let's give it a pattern of 10 pixels all right so as of now let's check it and see how it, it, it turns okay all right and we don't have anything and it is because we do not reference the class dots now let's check it again okay we can see it has changed nicely. Let's give it a, a border, okay? All right, now let's check it. And you can see that we have a nice border here. But we want something like this. We want this um, radius here, okay? This curve here. Let's go ahead and work on that one. So we give it a border top and left radius. Then we give it 15 pixels. Awesome, awesome. So if you compare this one to the original one, we can see that this one has some um, hover effect here. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on that one also. And there is a, an underline here. Okay, so we have to give it a test decoration and to remove the underline here, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and work on that one. So I'll come here and I will reference the BT, I'll reference the BTN one class and I will do hover, give it a hover effect. All right, so let's start with the test decoration and we say none, okay, we don't want an underline. You can see that it is gone. And let's give it a color. And let's give it a background color. And with a background color, I would like to go for deep sky blue, something like this. Now let's check it. Okay. By then we can see the original one, it is having some effects, okay? It's having some ease, ease in effects. So let's go ahead and do the same with this one. So I'll come here, I'll come to my bottom one, then I'll give it a transition effect, let's say all 0 0.5 seconds, and I'll do ease in. We have ease in, ease in, ease out, zoom in, zoom out, and pull. So I'll go for ease in. All right, now let's check it. Beautiful, beautiful. But then I want us to change this border color to the same color okay here so i'll come here and i'll do border color then i'll give it deep sky blue something like this okay let's check it okay you can see that um, it covers the whole thing all right awesome now let's go ahead and work on this button okay and it's very simple since we have created this one we are only have to copy and paste and change the bottom one to bottom two and change some few things okay so i'll come here then i'll grab this code from here i'll grab everything i'll copy then i'll paste it here then i'll change this one to btn2 and this one to, to btn2 so before anything let's check it and you can see that we are having the same features here okay now we have to change this one. This one, we have to change the radius to this place, okay? All right, so we come to the BTN2 and the place that we give it border top right, let's do it border bottom right instead of left, 
Let's give it right. Let's check it. All right. All right. I think it's the same as this one. Yeah. This one is here and this one also is down like that. Okay. Now we have to change the colors and some few things. Okay. You can see the color here must be changed. Okay. All right. So we have to come to this place. Then we change this one. The sky blue. Let's change it to orange red orange red and change this one also to orange red okay now let's check it awesome awesome wow all right so now the hardest part is for us to merge this together okay you can see that um the margin here has been merged together so we wanted something like that uh, you understand it um, so we don't know where to start from, but let's try it on the BTN one and and see something. So in the BTN one, this one we are trying to see if we can get it. I will give it a margin right. Let's say six pixels, and let's 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 check it. We are not we are not getting the result. It is rather um, merging. What if I give it a negative six pixels? All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, friends, we did it. Okay, now it is left for us to also work in the test elimination here and also this icons icons here. All right, let's end here. Come back on the next one and tackle that one. All right, thank you. Welcome back, friends. Now let's start work on the social links here. Okay. And to do that, we have to come into our Virtual Studio Code and into our HTML. We can see that we have our social links here. Okay. And it is also connected to the anchor tag class and also the font awesome. So we reference the social link, the anchor tag class and the font awesome. All right. Let's go to our CSS and do that. So here I'll call my social network and my anchor and the font also. Something like this. Now let's start with the border, okay? And let's give it a pattern. And let's give it a color. And a width and a height of 30 bezels. I think 35 bezels will do. All right, now let's save it and check. All right, no changes. Let's come here, social. All right, social. Awesome, awesome. Now we have it here, okay? But in original, we want it. We want a radius, okay? We want it in a round, not a, not in a box. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. So as it stands now, let's give it an hover effect, okay? So when we check the original, okay, you can see that it has some hover effect here. So let's go and do the same to this one. All right. And so to do that, I will come here and reference my my social network class, and I'll do the font awesome class. I'll, I'll give it my hover. Okay, let's start with the test decoration. All right, so let's take a look. Awesome. All right, now let's give it a transition effect. And I would like to copy the same thing here from this place. Okay, because it's the same thing. I'll copy and bring it here. Now let's save it and check. All right. Awesome. All right. So our next move is we have to remove this background. Okay. In original, we don't have any background. It's like a transparent. Okay. And there are two things involved. All right. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to come to our nav, nav bar section and we can see that there's a nav, uh, background here. Let's take it off. We take it off, but we are still not done. Let's check it. And we can see that uh, now it is picking the default background, okay, which is that which is the nav bar uh, inverse, okay. Now to see the cloud that this one belongs to, we have to right click on it and come to inspect. And let's click on it again. All right, so we click on this Kesa icon here, then we click on the background, okay. All right, so I think it's coming from here, okay. This nav bar invest, okay. Uh, this one, you can see that we, it has a background here, background color. So if I uncheck this box, you can see that it has turned to transparent. And then again, we don't want to edit bootstrap classes, so let's go ahead and, and create our own class and 
manipulate it. Okay. Now let's exit from here and head towards our CSS. And I would like to work inside the background, okay, because we are still on background. Okay, so I'll come here inside the background. I'll call the background inverse. Uh, sorry, inside our navbar, okay. So I'll call my navbar inverse class. And I'll say background color. Then I'll give it a transparent, okay. And for sure, we have to give it an impotence, okay, to remove all privileges. If you don't bring the impotent, it, it will not persist, okay. The default would rather take control. So something like this is okay. Now let's check it in our browser. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, you can see that we are getting through, okay. Uh, I would like us to end here, come back on the next one, and also work on the water wheeling effect and also this test animation. All right, let's end here, come back on the next one, and then go. All right, welcome back friends. In this episode, we are going to build this nice water wheeling effect that we're having on our screen here. And we are going to do that with the help of jQuery. All right, so let's dive in. And we will start with here, open your browser and search for uh, jQuery repo effect. Please add this one. If you want to get it easily, add this one, okay? Then hit enter. All right, so if you search as I told you, it will be the first one on your screen, then we click on it just type on that one so it will take you into a github like this just forget about everything and come here and download this file okay download it now it has downloaded here okay so i'll click on it to open now it has opened in my download folders i'm sure yours also will be in your download folder so you open it here so you unzill the file i've unzilled it and i'll open it here i'll come to this folder dist i'll come to this folder and what i need is only one file that is the minify version of this repo okay and it's here jquery.repris.minify.js okay main.js okay so i'll need only this file all right so i will i have to drag this file inside my project folder and specifically it has to be inside my js folder okay so I'll copy it in here, all right. Then I will drop it. Awesome, awesome. So after you've copied it like that, all right. So um, forget about everything here. I've copied it inside here, my JS folder. All right, so after it has been copied successfully like this, now I have to link it inside my HTML, all right. And to link it, I'll come into my HTML and the down section at the bottom here where I linked my JS. That is where I'm going to link this one also. So I'll start with the script tag. And again, jQuery and JavaScript files start with the script tag. Okay. Then with the source, I'll do JS with the JavaScript. Then I'll say jQuery. And there's the file name. Okay. All right. Dot JS. And I can give it a type. And the type i can call it test slash javascript okay awesome something like this it has been linked successfully all right now so we will start working in our js folder okay in our js folder in the file okay so we come to our js then main.js all right so now to begin with we are working in jquery so let me create some um, document and some function for the jquery before we move on so i will do jquery then a document dot ready okay then i'll create a function and in this function it is a code function and i'll open my parenthesis here my credit braces and here i will say something like um, all right so here i'll say user let me put it in a uh, in the quotation let me make it a string then i will say user so with this then i'll come here please come to your um, the, the github repo the place that we downloaded um, the file okay so come here it is giving us some instruction here you say okay we can see that um, we go with a selector okay 
they're selected than the rupees okay so we would need this one okay so the best thing to do is you have to copy this code come here and copy this code so you can copy it from here or you can highlight and copy whichever way all right then you come to your code so here you paste it in okay paste it in like this also all right so now there are three things to do here with the selector you have to call the class okay so i'll come to my html let me show you something um inside our slider okay you can see that um we are we are in a slider so i will need a slider class okay this slider i'll need a slider class okay so i'll call the slider inside the selector okay the first one i have to put it into um in a single quote then i'll call slider it's a class so i'll do dot slider then with the with the repris i would give a drop radius the drop radius i'll give it like 15 you can change it to your perfection then with and here what i'll do is i'll give it zero zero point zero one here too we can change it um, to see to to the perfection now let's take this one out or something like this all right so let's check it in the browser and it's not working okay let's go and check and okay you can see there are some indentation errors you can you can see that even here it has been marked which means we are having error in our code so, so first thing first let's and moreover even the jquery jquery is supposed to be small letters okay and um please cut this one let's cut this one cut it don't copy you cut it okay now let's um indent the code again so if possible let's write the whole thing again so we do jquery then we will need our document then we'll do dot ready then function okay function and then inside the function we call it okay like this after we call the function then we come here we come outside the function like this then we open our parenthesis then we hit enter something like this okay now paste in paste in the one that you cut all right paste in like this awesome now let's save it and check in our browser awesome awesome guys you can see our quarter will in fact is working perfectly wow wow isn't this wonderful wow wow you made it okay you made it awesome looking beautiful all right all right so you can choose to reduce it okay you can see the water the water line here it seems it's too much so you can choose to reduce it you can come to this place then give it like 10 okay let's check it let's check it uh, okay awesome awesome if it's too much you can still reduce it further okay um let's say if you make it something like five okay all right awesome manipulate it and get it the way you want it okay all right so congratulations we'll meet on the next one and we will work on the test animation here okay all right so so then keep on practicing all right All right, welcome back, friends. On our previous lesson, we were able to create our water cooling effect here, which is looking awesome. All right, so before we move on with this lesson, I would like us to commit the changes that we have added so far using our GitHub inside our VS Code. All right, so you come here, you come to your GitHub, and you come here, then you open your terminal. Before anything, let's commit the changes. Okay, so so we come here, then we give it a message. What message are we giving to this? I would like to call it slider. We are still on, on our slider. Okay, so we, I'll call it slider water repeal. All right, so I'll call it slider with water repeal effect. Then I will commit it. I'll hit on that to commit. Now, after I've committed the changes, let me push it at a go so that we continue with our new project. So I'll come here and open a terminal. Then I'll push it. So I'll do get push minus u origin we are in the main branch okay so origin main i'll hit enter push it all right so it has been pushed successfully make sure you do that one also make sure you put the project so that you'll be on the server side before we move on with today's lesson all right so on this episode we are going to work with our test animation here using jquery plugins okay so without much i do let's go ahead and download it and start using it all right 
All right, so you open your browser, then search for type.js. Please make sure you add GitHub, okay? Add GitHub to it, type.js, add GitHub. Then the very first one, this one, okay? The one with type.js, click on the, the first one. All right, it will open like this. Okay, so from here, we are downloading this one. Okay, so click on this one and come to download. So we are downloading it. All right, now open it. Let's open it inside our download folder. Mine is here. Okay, I've unzipped it so I can take advantage of it here. So I'll come to the library. Okay, the LID. Open that one. And all what I need is this one. I need a mini five version. Type.min.js. I need, I need this one. In the same manner, I will put it in, inside my JS my js folder here i'll copy it in type.main.js i'll just drag it in okay like this and i am good to go now let's go ahead and link it inside our html so i'll come here inside my html like this here now i'll put it here okay it's a jquery file so i'll start with a script tag with a source then js slash then the file name type.main.js and i can give it a type of test slash javascript okay awesome now that we have linked this one we can now enter into our main.js and start writing our code now to begin with i have to reference the the test i have to reference the test class so inside the slider you can see that you have a test here okay so i have to reference this test okay this test class uh, inside my my js okay so i will come here then i'll start with the dollar sign then inside the parentheses I will need a double quote. Then I will do the dot test, which is the class test. Then I would also call the jQuery plugin, which is the type. I'll reference that one also here. Then I will close my parentheses. Then I bring my parentheses and I also bring the curly braces. Okay. Then inside the curly braces, I'll start with the string. Okay. I I need a test, so I have to use a string. So I'll call the strings. Then I need. A square bracket then i will need a double quote then let me put in some dummy test first okay we are putting some dummy test first so i will do first sentence then i'll put my second sentence okay inside the quotation because we are referencing a string okay all right something like this all right then i'll give it a type uh type speed okay i'll say type speed let me give it zero all right so let's check it in the browser and friends, you can see that it is working. Okay, you can see it here, but the problem here is that it stops, okay? It's supposed to be looping, but it stops, the loop stops. So we have to give it a Boolean. We have to set the loop to true, okay? So that it will keep on animating. So here, I'll come here, then I will say loop, then I will say true. All right, now let's check it again. All right, you can see that now it hasn't stopped, all right? So now let's use some CSS to style it a bit. Let's make the font size bigger. And also this um, bar here, there's a, a bar here. Okay, so let's style it a bit. All right, now, so inside our HTML, uh, we need to reference this slider class. Okay, so dot slider, then we come to dot test. Okay, so that is how we are going to do it. So I'll do slider dot slider dot test. Okay. All right, so inside, let's first give it a display. We call display, then we say inline, inline block, okay? Inline block. Then let's give it a font size, a font size of 50 pixels. Now let's check it. Let's check it first. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, but if you if we check it well, you can see that it is blinking, okay? It kind of brings before. The next one comes okay we don't want it like that so i think we have to change this one the inline let's make it inline instead of inline block let's check it okay okay i think it has been dealt with but this keza line here it have to get the same size like the fonts okay let me check it from the original ah you can see yeah it is kind of tall enough okay Let's check on that one. So to do that, I'll use um, a default class here. So I'll, I'll call the class slider again. Then I'll call another class called type cursor. Okay, something like this. Let's check it. 
Oh, sorry. All right, what is wrong? Let me put a comma here. Okay. Let me put a comma here. Now let's check it again. Okay, but the case okay, it's not types, it's typed. It's the type Keza. Okay. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Very good. All right. Now we got it how we want it. Now that we have it like this, let's go ahead and manipulate the fonts. All right. So now let's go ahead and replace the test. Let's take off the dummy test and replace it with the right ways. We say it's what? I love coding and to share. First and foremost, let's check it. Okay, now we have to change the font to uppercase, okay? And we can do that with the help of CSS3, okay? So we we'll come to our CSS, then here, we will do test transform, then we say uppercase, okay? Now let's save it and check. Awesome. All right, so I'll come to my main.js and the test here, I would like to wrap it with a strong. You remember strong? So strong, then I love, then I'll close it here. Okay, I'll close it here, something like this. And the coding, I would like to give the coding a class. So let me start with a strong, then I close the coding, close it here too, close it here. Something like this. Before anything, when we save it and check it, you can see that the I love and the coding font is different from and to share. Okay, that is a strong. All right, so now I would like to give this class, I would like to give a class here. And with a class, I would like to call it primary. Okay, now take a note. Okay, I'm giving it a single quote. Why? Because we have already um, initialized a, a double quote here. So if you put double code, it will conflict. Okay, it will conflict. It's not work. So let me give it a color of primary. Then I'll come to my CSS. Then I'll create that primary class here. Then I'll give it a color, a color of uh, orange red. Okay, orange red, something like this. All right, now let's check it in the browser. And um, wow, it's looking beautiful, isn't it? Awesome, awesome. Now let's go ahead and do the same to the and to share. Okay, so I will come to my main.js and I'll put a strong here um, and two. Okay, so I'll do strong. Then I'll close it here. Close it here. Okay, then the share also, I'll give it a strong, because I'll change that color to open, then the closing here. Okay. All right, so I'll give it a class, okay? I think um, it's too long. Let me let me cut it short somewhere here, okay, so that we can follow. Um, sorry, let me cut it somewhere here. Uh -huh. Now I'll I'll give it a class. I'll give this this one the share, okay? Here I'll give it a class, and remember they are all having the same color properties, so. I can give it a plumery, okay? So with this, let's check it first. I love coding and to share, it's not it's not taking effect. Let's check it well, oh sorry. Class equals, all right, I love coding and to share, okay? All right, awesome. Now, if you can check this, um, this Keza bar here is supposed to drink. Let's check it from the original. You can see it's blinking. But this one is not blinking. So let's go ahead and work on that one too. All right, so inside my VS Code, I'll come to my CSS. What is the type? Yeah, I need this class. The type Kesa. I need this one. And I'll bring it somewhere here. Then let me give it opacity and animation blinks, okay? so. So I'll say 0 0.7 seconds, then I'll give it an infinite. Infinite means it will not stop. Now, what I'm doing is uh, make it responsive in all 
browsers okay but if you don't put this one when you open your site on some browsers that cannot respond to the blinking okay so you have to work it for the rest of the browsers okay that is what we are doing it's an infinite let's copy it then there's a let's duplicate this code so this one is for safari and let's work on mozilla also this one is for safari then mozilla and i think we have to copy this one uh, we have to copy the whole king frames and set it better for compatibility sake i think mozilla is uh, this one should be set for mozilla okay and so i'll copy this one and i'll duplicate the code the code here i think i need it two times two more times then i'll change this one to uh, mozilla okay uh, no the web kit web kit then i will change this one rather to mozilla so that it will have access to mozilla and also safari for mac okay so something like this all right now when you save it and head towards our browser now we have an awesome work okay now everything is working perfectly i think we have covered enough for today so let's commit and push it okay let's give it a message a commit message then we call it slider with animating test okay let's save it let's commit it then let's push it let me clear then let me push it so we push minus u origin main all right now our project has been pushed successfully let's meet on the next one and learn more